Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be working on yet again this 2014 Mazda 3. I am going to be updating the infotainment system, its OS version, uh, to the very latest version that is out there currently and I believe there is no longer going to be any more updates to it so it's the the latest and greatest. Alright with that said let's go ahead and get started. Hello. I'm going to explain how you can go about updating your operating system on these infotainment systems so that you can do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. As you can see, I'm working on a workbench. These are out of the vehicle. I'm going to show you how to do it from this setup. Uh, it is a lot easier for me to show you this, but I'm also going to show you how to do it in your car as well. So really the first thing that you need to do is make sure you have some instructions. I have some instructions here on how to go about doing the process. You should read them because these are notoriously problematic and you can brick them easy. Now the reason why I have a workbench here is because I can give these units continuous power unlike the vehicle which wants to turn off after a period of time and there's extra steps that you have to do to keep it running but don't be scared you can do it i'm going to show you how to do it here now with that said this is the first thing that you need to do you need to get into your system menu your settings menu here and go over into the system menu and go down to about version information and get the version that you currently have now these go way back to the 30s 30.0 etc uh, we're going to start at 59 there's two files that are going to be needed for this upgrade we're going to go from 59 into 70 uh, it's a fail safe file and a reinstall file and the failsafe file has to be run first before the reinstall file. Once we get into 70, it's only a single file. It's a little bit easier to update. What you'll want to do is to take a USB stick, remove all the data on the stick except for the two files. This needs to be formatted in FAT32 so the, the infotainment system can read it. Okay, let's talk about getting the file set up and ready to put on a USB stick. So I have my USB stick here. I'm just going to right click, hit format. Uh, this just happens to be about 8 gigs. It should be fine, but I do recommend 16. You want to make sure the file system is FAT32. Um, you can give it any type of volume label you want. and then just use quick format. Okay, and so that is ready now uh, for the files itself. And once it's finished up, hit close. And now over on the right hand side, I have my two files that I need to copy over. Just select them both, copy, and start the copying process. Now, part of the process that you should do is do validation on the files that you just copied over. So this utility is important to make sure that the digital, so that the digital fingerprint of the original files never got changed or modified. So as you copy them down from the internet, maybe on your local drive and then from your local drive onto the USB stick, you want to make sure that that digital fingerprint does not change in any way uh, because you don't want to update with corrupted files that will end up bricking your unit. And so on the internet, the question may be, how do you get these files? Uh, you do have to hunt for the files themselves because Mazda doesn't give these out on any of their public internet sites. You have to go about, look them up, 
figure out from your version on what you need to update to, and then choose the right files. Another right. thing I need to mention about the files, they are regional specific. So as you saw me download the files, they were NA, that means North America. You want to make sure that you choose the right file from the ones that are on the internet and that you don't get a file made for example EU if your vehicle is in North America. So be concerned and make sure that the region is correct. You're going to turn on your vehicle, put in the USB stick itself, and then you want to get into the service menu. Service menu is the music note. You know, hold that down, the favorites, and the volume button all at the same time. Hold them there for a bit. This is the service menu. You just take your commander wheel. You know, you can move forward or backwards. If you move it backwards, you go right to 99. You want to click on it to get it started. And it's going to ask you to search the USB drive. And here you can see the reinstall package. Oops, let's go back and not do that. And the failsafe package. And as I mentioned before, we want to start with the failsafe package. So we can click on the failsafe package itself and I'll ask you if you want to install it. Sure, let's go ahead. That was successful, so just click OK. You will have to go back into the same service screen again. Go back to 99. Do a search. And we will want to start with the reinstall package. This is going to take the longest. And at no point restarting the car or turning the car off, else this could brick itself. And you won't be able to use the system until it gets fixed. We're going to go ahead and keep an eye on it. This should probably take 20 or 30 minutes. Give or Alright, the software is complete on this update, so as it says, it's time to turn off the vehicle, or in this case, turn off the power, and we can have it restart. And what I'll do next here when it boots is to make sure the version number is 70. Looking at this, both the operating system and the failsafe versions are 70, exactly what we had installed. Now it's time to go ahead and download the software for the next version update, which is 7400310A. All right, let's go ahead and get into the service menu again, because we're going to update to the latest firmware. All right, and as I mentioned, there is just a single package for this update. And this gets us into 74.00.324, which is the latest. Go ahead and turn off our power. All right, now we have the latest. Let's verify that Android Auto will work. So I do have the new box for Android Auto. It does come with uh, two different types of cables. Those are all hooked up.
Yep, I do want to enable Android Auto. That looks good. Once again. There we go. Okay. So now we got that to work. Couple restarts, disconnects from the phone, and now it's working. All right, I do have my instructions here, and I've prepared my USB drive for the update file. I'm going to follow these instructions. I know these are a little bit out of date, uh, but they do work. So I'll go ahead and get started. So what you basically want to do is not turn on the car, but just press the start button. For accessories, it does recommend to you to go into the service screen. And what you do is you're going to hold down the music button, the favorite button, and the volume mute button all at the same time. And you'll see the service menu come up. What it wants you to do is go into number two, clear the codes. That is completed. And then it instructs you to go ahead and switch off the ignition, close all the doors, including the trunk, and um, lock the vehicle with the remote. Keep all remote transmitters uh, about five meters away from the vehicle for three minutes. And five meters is about 15 feet. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We are going to take our USB stick. We're going to put it into the USB slot. Mine is between the two front seats. Sometimes it is down in this location here as well, but I have a CD player. You should see on the screen that it's detected a USB stick. And then we're going to go back into the service menu using radio, favorites, and volume button down. That's going to pop up again. We're going to go to screen, or sorry, uh, number 99. You can tap it here, or you can just go use the commander wheel and go back to 99. System update not started. Click the commander button. Yep, you want to search for the update packages. And now it's searching. And as you can see, the old version is 2.30, and we're going to update to 3.24. So you want to select it, hit the commander button. It's going to ask you, do you want to do it? And you want to make sure that for every 20 minutes, I did mine for every 15 minutes, you want to either press on the brake pedal or the clutch pedal or open the door. Because you don't want the CMU going into sleep mode during the update. So we're going to click update. It's going to prepare. Now, this will take a little bit, so don't worry. It is actually working. And in the instructions, what it's going to do is it's going to go from this screen to blank to like a reboot. And then you'll see the progress screen. So this is going to take a while. Also, remove the USB card uh, before you go ahead and turn it back on. Go down to version information, and there you can see we have uh, we have successfully updated the version on this Mazda CMU. All right, so that update went fairly well. I do know that other people have not had that success, and mostly with the older versions. The older versions required two updates. That was pre-74. 
So you can brick these Mazda CMU infotainment systems by either not following the directions correctly, turning on the car, interrupting the update, or there could be a problem that is out of your control and during the process it fails. In another video I'm going to talk about how to unbrick one of these CMUs when problems occur. So I'm going to actually take how to write to this chip in another video, get this to a point where we're going to be able to restart the upgrade process. So watch out, that video is coming here soon. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. Better yet, subscribe and you get the latest notifications when new videos come out. I appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.